this is uh, part 2 of the transmission lines the topic uh, which has been uh, specially designed for the gate uh, uh, examination so we'll discuss the brief equations uh, on transmission line 2 which are left out now if we observe here the one of the very important uh, parameter for the transmission lines is a voltage standing wave ratio VSWR this VSWR v voltage standing wave ratio and this is defined as uh, V max over V min of the standing waves which are formed on the transmission line. So if you see here these, this is the standing wave which is formed and if we determine V, v max and if you know the V min you can find out the voltage standing wave ratio on the line. Now this voltage standing wave ratio is also related to the reflection coefficient. Here it is shown related to the magnitude of reflection coefficient. Ga magnitude of gamma the reflection coefficient is VSWR minus 1 over VSWR plus 1. If I write this equation the other way in terms of VSWR it is 1 plus gamma magnitude over, over 1 minus gamma magnitude. This reflection coefficient also could be determined uh, having both uh, phase and magnitude part by knowing the value for ZL and Z0. Z is the load impedance, Z0 is the characteristic impedance of line. We can determine the value for gamma ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0 or magnitude of the gamma which is normally needed to determine VSWR can be found from the relation the magnitude of this. One of the very important uh, parameter which is related to the reflection coefficient is the return loss. Return loss is uh, given as minus 20 log magnitude of reflection coefficient. Basically, it's a parameter which says return loss. There's a loss in returning the signal. Basically, we do not want signal to signal to return or reflect but this parameter is in terms of that. If that means if the return loss having a positive high value that means the VSWR for the line or for that particular component is low. So we are looking for a return loss of very high in terms of dBs. This return loss is in dBs. Now the VSWR only gives the magnitude of reflection coefficient of one bus. Suppose we wish to find the impedance uh, of a load, then we also need the phase part of it, not only magnitude. So, by observing the first voltage minimum from the load, you can always find the phase part of the reflection coefficient. The relation is twice beta, the phase constant, D minimum over equals to phi plus pi where phi is the phase angle of gamma at the load end. So by knowing the minimum distance first this is the first minimum from the load you can always determine the value for the phase part of the gamma that means phi could always be determined from this relation. This is one of the very important relation uh, which exists on the transmission lines. Now, another part here is that uh, we know that VSWR being one of the very important parameter. When VSWR is 1, we know gamma is 0, reflection cushion 0. That means if there is a perfect match on the line, and that is what is desired in most of the cases. And VSWR is infinite, gamma is uh, 1, and so perfect mismatch on the line and actually we do not want a perfect mismatch on the line but we want a perfect match on the line okay now we uh, try to find out 
the other relations the if the transmission line is given having characteristic impedance z not so loaded by the load impedance zl we can always determine the zn the input impedance of the line in terms z not and zl and the length of the line tan beta l this determines having the length of the line by knowing the length of the line and z z not you can always determine the complex value of the input impedance since this relation is quite complex it is easier it's better to find out uh, the input impedances by a chart in the form of a chart the sesmus chart basically it gives a graphical manipulation of the equations and uh, this my chart is basically a constant r and constant reactance circles now uh if we are given like uh, impedance at z j z max that means a voltage maximum voltage maximum is given the impedance maximum impedance of the voltage maximum is known you can also find the value to be z not into vswr and at the z z j z at the value of z z minimum is from z not over vswr this will be more clear when we discuss uh, problems on these uh, equations now another important uh, relationship for the coaxial line coaxial line having outer conductor and the center conductor the outer conductor diameter being d capital d center conductor is small d so you can always find the characteristic impedance of this line by as z not equals 138 over root of sin r log of log of s10 d by d so this is the value you can determine for the coax coaxial line now one of the very important uh, topic is on the how to use the sections of the transmission line now one some of the very important length of the sections have been used throughout and we should know what is the corresponding relations for their input impedance like if i have a lambda do lambda by 2 section of the line that integral length of lambda by 2 zn turns out to be zl that means if there is a line length is lambda by 2 and it's loaded by zl then the input impedance is equal to the zl if there is a lambda by 4 section of the line then zn turns out to to be z not square this is z not z not square over zl such a simple relation and if there is a lambda 8 by lambda by 8 section that means zn is given by this relations so these are very simple and handy relations to determine and in certain cases we need these relations very frequently to determine the to convert certain impedances to some desired impedances now one of the and the very important parameter is the phase difference you can always find a phase difference in term of the path difference that is 2 pi by lambda into the path difference if you know these relations most of the relations are covered in these uh, topics but still if some someone are left out that will talk uh, when we discuss the related problems